Sir, Modi recently conducted a surgical strikes across the LOC and hit these terror camps hard, where no government would venture before. Pakistan, it seems, only understands a message of strength. Is it not time now to hit hard across the LOC and hold terrority again? Uh, this surgical strike that we had in September uh, 2017 was in reaction to the militant attack in Uri. Uh, and uh, that was uh, basically done to convey this message to Pakistan that its policy of uh, using terror as an instrument of its foreign policy uh, will not succeed. And India does have the wherewithal to uh, fight terror across LOC. Uh, and uh, because we know that there are several terrorist camps uh, close to the LOC and which has been set up by the Pakistani intelligence and which have been uh, sending out infiltrators across LOC into Kashmir. So that was a very, very uh, well considered uh, decision at that point of time to uh, uh, convey to Pakistan that uh, India cannot suffer this in nonsense endlessly and it, will, it has the wherewithal to take action. Uh, but uh, these messages uh, we uh, convey to Pakistan episodically, uh, in my opinion, may not be a deterrent enough for Pakistani intelligence agency and its security forces. Uh, we have to uh, do couple, uh, couple it up, we have to combine it with uh, you know, purposeful uh, communication uh, at uh, several levels, at the level of security forces, maybe at DGMO level, maybe at NSL level, maybe at uh, foreign secretary level, at different levels you have to communicate it to Pakistan. And uh, we have had uh, an example in the past between 2004 and 2007 when infiltration came down there was absolutely uh, you know uh, no uh, uh, problem whatsoever for Indian government to raise uh, fences across the LOC during that period you had a period of lull so that period of lull uh, can come back again if we engage Pakistan in a meaningful purposeful uh, communication uh, I will not call it dialogue. Dialogue is structured and you have a particular purpose. But here you can, you can go ahead and uh, uh, structure the uh, communication in a manner that in cases of uh, infiltration, in case of uh, attacks like this, you are at least communicating very strongly, uh, uh, very politely but very firmly with uh, the adversary or with the opponent. Uh, and uh, telling them that you know this cannot go on endlessly. So this is uh, something that we have to keep in mind. Sure. Sir, India holds all the positions of strength across the LOC including the heights all along uh, Siachen. Is it not time to take advantage of this position into hitting the Pakistani posts hard and engage in post occupation? No, I think you, can, you, have, you are a responsible country. India is a responsible country. If we were to go across the LOC, we would have done that long back. We have not done it because of two reasons. A, because of the fact that we believe in resolving issues through dialogue, not war. B, we also want to communicate it to the international community that we do not intend to uh, resort to war vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan to solve our issues and we are a responsible country. So that is why at the height of the Kargil war which we uh, won, uh, we didn't get into uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir even if it legitimately belongs to us uh, and uh, even if you know there was a, a sentiment in uh, India, a very strong sentiment that we need to get into okay and reoccupy it. Actually, uh, you should get it back from Pakistan. So, in that sense, uh, there is a great degree of uh, responsibility, there is a great degree of restraint which is being exercised by India on this issue and I think uh, it is very, very legitimate 
and uh, it is required also for India to be arch responsible and arch strength on these issues. Sir, Modi and BJP government trying hard to come up with new diplomatic offensive including exclude him uh, like Park from SARC, uh, S-A-A-R-C and trying to build more dams in Kashmir to limit water from Kashmir to Pakistan. How successful have these measures been and how successful can the water diplomacy be? You see, diplomatic offensive vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan, India has been doing since 1947. This is not new. So, Modi government uh, uh, might have uh, you know, made it more obvious, but this is something which is going on forever. So, there is nothing uh, bad about that. India uh, has every right to engage uh, the international community in a diplomatic off offensive against Pakistan, basically to expose Pakistan, to expose its policies. Uh, India has been doing it. Uh, coming to uh, the other uh, issue that you raised, that uh, whether uh, you know, uh, we should take advantage of our uh, positions, uh, advantageous positions, uh, I think I have already answered it, that you know, we, ha we have to understand that we have a responsible nation and we cannot be responsible as far as this issue is concerned. So, Actually, you know, one should not look at uh, uh, India as uh, bid not to attend Salk Summit in Islamabad as uh, a bid to uh, take Pakistan out of Salk. No, anything but that. We want Pakistan to be in Salk but behave responsibly. So, it is kind of an alienating, not alienating Pakistan, but isolating it. That, you know, you are uh, the one who, are, who is trying to uh, organize uh, all kinds of terrorist activities vis-a-vis -vis India and other countries, Afghanistan as well. And this policy will not take you anywhere. And if you are resorting this kind of policy, uh, there is no use, you know, organizing a summit uh, in Islamabad and talking about peace. So this was a diplomatic offensive of the right kind. And coming to water diplomacy, India has never tried to go past the Indus Water Treaty. India has respected Indus Water Treaty and India is in no mood to stop water flowing into Pakistan. In fact, for those who do not know facts, I would tell them that the western rivers which have been allocated to Pakistan three western rivers, Indus, Jhelum and Jhelum. India is well within its rights to stop the flow of 3.6 MAF of water. It can store 3.6 million acre feet of water for its use. The allocations are uh, divided, have been divided uh, among the three rivers. Uh, you have some amount in some rivers, some other amount in some other river. But you are allowed 3.6 mAF water. India has not yet stored any water on these three rivers. So that suggests that India is in no mood to steal water. We are building dams, but these dams are wrong of the river dams. Where the point is not to arrest the flow of water, but to use it to generate electricity. So that is what India is doing. So it has a developmental coordinate. It doesn't have a diplomatic or offensive coordinate to it. So people in Pakistan who are raising this boogie of India stealing water or using water as a weapon are misguided. They do not have facts on their fingertips. But India has uh, decided not to allow any water to flow from the eastern rivers. And 100% of the water flowing in the eastern rivers are allocated to India by the treaty. But if you ask me, I can tell you from figures that I get from Pakistan, every year about 1 million acre feet of water continues to flow down the rivers allocated to India. So in that sense, India is not also doing enough to arrest the flow of water on the eastern rivers. So. The, the talk of India using water war with uh, water as a weapon or 
waging water war with Pakistan is grossly misplaced. Sir, why has the BJP not taken a harder line when it comes to relocating Kashmiri Pandesh to the valley? Can they not bring some sanity of Kashmiriyat to the uh, this thing, radicalization of the valley? Is the constant boil of the valley in beating us to take active stance on PUK? You see, Pandit relocation uh, to Kashmir Valley is, a, is an issue that the pundits will have to first take into account. Uh, uh, as far as I know, we, ha we had organized uh, one uh, survey uh, of pundits uh, in the valley uh, and we had uh, uh, interviewed by people in the valley about the prospect of pundits coming back to the valley. And you will not imagine there was so much of support behind this, cutting across communities. So there was this, and, but how to implement it, how to execute it, should the pundits go back and start uh, living again in the properties that they had once owned? Many of them have sold off their property. So if they are going to come back, are you going to uh, rehabilitate them in uh, ghettos, like in uh, distinct uh, resettlement colonies? where they can be targets, prime targets, sitting dogs or whether you will allow them to mix into the population as they were earlier and uh, you will uh, reweave the fabric of uh, Kashmiri society. So there are a lot of questions to be asked, answers are not easy to find. But there are, I can assure you there are a lot of uh, non-governmental organizations, civil society bodies which are looking into this case and uh, be, because BJP had uh, raised this issue during the elections and all and they are working towards uh, this Pandit rehabilitation issue uh, this issue has gathered momentum this effort has gathered momentum so a lot of civil society bodies are talking about you know, bringing Pandits and Muslims together they are organizing uh, discussions groups they are organizing dialogue groups so this is something that will uh, lead to a peaceful uh, resolution of this issue. Uh, I do not know whether you know all the pundits that have migrated from the valley would like to go back. But those who want to go back should be allowed to go back, should be allowed uh, to uh, settle down in the valley with all kinds of security uh, you know, allocated to them. So this is something that you know the government has a role to play in it, the civil society has a role to play in it, all the political parties in Jammu and Kashmir will have to play a role in it. So I think this is a work in progress and I think uh, they, these people are moving in the right direction. Okay, sir. So Malash, China increasing is arming Pakistan through the Karakoram. Sorry. Recently the highway was reconstructed again in 2015 after massive landslide and trade in ongoing. What can India do to stop the Chinese nexus involved in Kashmir and P.O.K.? No, no, the first the question is, you know, if two sovereign countries are coming together and trying to uh, strengthen relationship between them, whether it is through Karakoram Highway or CPEC or whatever, why should India stop it? Why should India stop it? We have to see whether it is affecting us. Does China uh, China's entry into Gwadar uh, affect us? It does. If Chinese are improving the economy of Pakistan by investing in Pakistan, does it affect us? Why should it affect us? They are, they are, they, they are developing the economy of Pakistan. So let them do that. They are bringing in money. Pakistan is being raised as a client state. There are many people in Pakistan who are objecting to this. They are saying that, you know, China has come in as another East India company designed to colonize Pakistan. Let Pakistanis debate about it. Why should we get in and join the discussions and be worried about it? Uh, we are strong enough to defend ourselves. If Badr is coming up as an affront to us, we have no way to stop them. Because they are two sovereign countries engaging each other. The only, point, only thing that we can do is to strengthen our relationship with both the countries. And, uh, at whatever price and second thing you know 
if the corridor is moving through a disputed territory which belongs to us, we have a legitimate right to raise our voice and we have raised our voice. Because if the corridor is passing through Gilgit Baltistan, which is legitimately Indian territory, then we have every right to raise our voice and we should raise our voice. But I am of the opinion that this CPEC corridor is not about corridor alone. It's about a lot of financial investment that is coming in from China. They are building uh, basically thermal power, uh, they are building dams, they are building uh, wind uh, power, they are solar power, they are all, they are, they are engaging uh, in all kinds of economic activities where Indian private sector can also participate and we should explore this option rather than you know getting too, too worried about uh, the Chinese entry into Pakistan. Well, it is another thing that Pakistan has not always been comfortable with Indian investments. They have not tried, they have not allowed India uh, to have trade and com decent trade and commerce activity with Pakistan. They have allowed, didn't allow us to have a corridor through Pakistan to Afghanistan, to Central Asia. And that is another thing. But why should India behave like Pakistan? India yeah. should behave much more openly. India should come out and say that, you know, well, we have absolute reservation against the corridor being uh, corridor coming through a disputed territory, territory of uh, uh, and Baltistan. But as regards the economic uh, opportunities that uh, CPEC has brought about, uh, we would encourage our private sector to go in and uh, invest there. So that will uh, put both China and Pakistan in a quandary. They would, uh, the ball will be in their court to uh, respond to India's uh, uh, reaction and uh, we should not overtly try to stop all this. Why should we try to stop all this? The Pakistanis are stopping it anyway. The Pakistanis are expressing their distaste, expressing their anguish, expressing their anger at the way the Chinese are conducting themselves. The Chinese are beating up local police officials. They are uh, behaving uh, like monarchs in uh, um, different areas. So this is creating anti-China sentiment in Pakistan. So let Pakistanis debate about it. We have no right to be there. Sure.